23 rigs and you have literally billions of dollars worth of time and money pressure. One mistake that leads to disaster could cripple the company and delight their competitors. Shipyards from Mississippi to South Korea would love to snatch away Keppelfell's business. They're the leader of the pack, so they have the most to lose. But this Singaporean company has an edge. More than 35 years of experience building rigs in tropical heat and humidity. Tropical heat also describes the way these rigs are made. When you're building 23 rigs at a fever pitch, any slip-up could shatter the production schedule. So the company has spent decades eliminating inefficiencies in their production methods. We try to innovate our processes in construction and so on, uh, so that we can build better, safer and cheaper. And faster. To speed up the process, they first build the entire rig in space. Cyberspace, that is. As you can see here, the engineering team works with a state-of-the-art marine architecture program. This is the design for a new state-of-the-art oil rig. 69 meters long, with 158 meter legs, and up to five decks of living quarters to house 112 men. It's one of an advanced, super-efficient new generation of rig. It will drill deeper and faster than the older rigs, but the design is still a work in progress. The engineering team is inspecting their plan for an area below the derrick, and they've just caught a mistake. A pipe is running where a door will bash into it. It would be disastrous if they actually built it this way. Here, they fix it with a simple click of a mouse. Once the team completes troubleshooting the design, computers will guide every phase of construction as they turn the design into a reality. That will take 18 months, if they manage to stay on their breakneck schedule. First, steel plates are cut to precise size and shape. Each cut is controlled by a computer, using data from the design software. The software also helps generate the shop drawings workers use at every step of the building. Constructing the rig is like putting together a jigsaw puzzle, except this puzzle is enormous. It's made from 25,000 pieces of steel, and a hundred lives will depend on how well they fit together. Even with methods this efficient, and 800 workers devoted to this one rig, it still takes six months to go from cutting individual steel plates to finishing huge sections of the rig. This section is a part of the hull where giant pumps will be housed. It's as big as a locomotive, 20 meters long, and more than 55 tons. When huge sections of the rig are finished, they're moved to the dry dock, where they are stacked and welded one after another, until the rig starts to take on its final shape. So far, construction is on schedule, but next comes the hard, tricky part, navigating it out of the dry dock and into open water. And this megastructure is still half a year from being finished and joining the worldwide fleet that's desperately drilling for oil and gas. Back in the North Sea, the Noble Peat has been hired by a French gas company to drill a new well. But this time it must literally mount and drill through what's called a permanent platform. The permanent platform is the structure shown here, just to the right of the Noble Peat. These platforms are placed where scientists, using advanced instruments that can see deep into the earth, determine that large reserves of oil and gas are likely to be found. This platform already has a number of working wells connected to pipelines sending the fuel to shore. But now it needs a new well, and it can't drill one on its own. That's why it needs a drilling rig like the Noble Peat. Many rigs can't handle this job, but the Noble Peat can because it can actually raise itself more than seven stories above the sea. Huge electric motors turn massive gears that literally lift the entire hull out of the water jacking it up into the sky. Called jack-up rigs, they can position themselves over permanent platforms for drilling. It sounds easy, like jacking up a car, but lifting this massive rig is the equivalent of jacking up 7,000 cars while balancing on stilts in the middle of the ocean. So Dutch barge engineer Paul Kroner has reason to be nervous. He's about to jack up the Noble Peat. Stand by for jacking. 36 electric motors, 12 on each leg, slowly turn the giant steel gears.
To avoid a jam, rig workers slather grease where the gears will climb. One stuck gear could halt this mission before it even starts. Gradually, the rig begins to lift. Sixty tense minutes later, the rig reaches its apex 26 meters above the water. But it's still not ready to drill. The Pete's drilling derrick needs to be slid out over the top of the permanent platform on a huge movable arm. Then the drill can be sent through a hole in the platform and down into the seabed. It's up to the Dutch drilling expert, Dennis Sellen, to execute this move. He activates four massive pistons that slowly begin pushing the 840-ton arm out over the permanent platform. Each piston is powerful enough to move six bulldozers. So powerful, in fact, that they all must be closely monitored. All four pistons must push together so the arm moves straight ahead. If one piston goes faster than the others, the arm would jump its track, bringing the operation to a dead halt. It takes more than an hour, but at last the arm is in position. And this megastructure is ready to drill a new well. But even though scientists have told them where to drill, grinding through miles of rock to find a reservoir of natural gas will take at least eight weeks, if they can find it at all. And the crew of the Noble Pete will have to stay on high alert as they drill, because accidents and death threaten every rig worker in the North Sea. When this megastructure oil rig in the North Sea isn't drilling, it's losing $55,000 a day. But even though it's in position to drill, drilling hasn't begun yet. That's because the Noble Pete's roughnecks, the workers who actually man the drill, must still haul more than 500 lengths of pipe from the main deck up to the derrick. This drilling pipe will get shoved into the earth a piece at a time for miles. Each section is 10 meters long and weighs almost half a ton. So this is a big job. It takes a winch and plenty of roughneck muscle to haul these pipes up into the derrick and onto the drill floor where the drilling takes place. The drill floor is one of the most dangerous places aboard a rig. And it's drilling chief Tony Wilpshire's job to make sure that everyone stays alert and safe. Make sure that this valve is okay. Because it's a safety valve, we might need it in case of emergency. Here, a careless worker could find himself on the wrong end of a swinging pipe. Though Tony's concerned about safety, he's also worried about speed. In drilling, you always talk about economics. How fast it goes, how bad it is. To work more efficiently, the Roughnecks join three pipe segments together ahead of time and stack them in the corner of the drill floor. Once they've stacked them all, they're finally ready to drill. Now it's time for this rig to start making money. They hope. There's no guarantee that this well will strike any oil or gas.